Gracie Jiu Jitsu. They started out by dominating the early UFCs, bringing Jiu Jitsu to the Americas, and everybody knew that if you had a belt under the Gracies, you were a real threat. But does that all change? Because when you look at competitions, you don't see the last name Gracie for most of the winners. Instead, you see people like Gordon Ryan. I made it my mission to go to the biggest Gracie gym I could find, Gracie University. This is owned by both Henner and Hiran Gracie, who everybody is aware of. Whether you watch their bully videos, you bought one of their flip bags, or you probably heard about the lawsuit. I went to their gym to figure out if their jiu-jitsu is still the peak of the sport, and I'll let you guys decide. Here I am at Gracie University in Torrance, California. I showed up for one of the no-gi classes, and I started off with a bang by not knowing the outfit. Apparently here, it's normal to wear your belt while doing nogi. I'm not knocking it at all, but it's definitely something I haven't done before. Then I had to do the most questionable warm-up by starting with my wrists. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, I've just never had to do this in jiu-jitsu before. When we finally got to class, things changed a little bit. Without a doubt, Hidan is the most charismatic and energy-filled coach I've ever seen on the jiu-jitsu mats. He's an extremely welcoming personality. Now I chose this class because they told me it was going to be one of the toughest classes they offer, and you'll even see that I'm rolling with gloves on we can punch each other. As for the class, it got a little fishier. It was a guillotine defense day. However, the defenses were weird because I was supposed to do the guillotine, then fall down without locking up a guard and just let him pass. Also, everybody kept trying to fix my guillotine. They wanted me to move my hands around and make sure I was doing the right side so they could do the takedown. It's always interesting to see what people say when you're not wearing a belt. Because I easily could have shown them the guillotine. And if you want to learn real guillotines as well, go to my website where I just recently launched my instructional and you'll be choking guys out of gyms like this in no time. But let's be honest, it's not my job to judge techniques based on somebody with way more experience than me. I leave that to the comment section thinking everything's a street fight. Without a doubt though, despite this class being absolutely ginormous, Hidan did a great job getting around to everybody, making sure you did the technique correctly. He's a really great coach on that end. Yes! Yeah! Then as the class went on, the techniques got better and we saw some legitimate guillotine defense assuming you have the ability to do it. But to see if Gracie Jiu Jitsu is actually legitimate, we have to test her students who train here all the time and actually practice the art. For my first round, with gloves on, I'm going up against another black belt. His goal is to get out from being underneath me, stand up, and then we reset. My goal is to hold him down and beat him up while keeping my punches under control, of course. Now, full disclosure, I've practiced MMA before, and my opponent probably is not. I'm being really light with the punches while keeping heavy top pressure. I've got some fatty gloves on, so it makes going for submissions that much harder, but when you're doing MMA, it's not about the submissions. It's about trying to stay on top, put pressure on them, wear them down, and keep the punches flowing. Every time you throw a strike, you risk losing position because it takes such a big movement to throw your arm and it gives them an easy opening to start shrimping, pushing off of them, etc. So it's important to get chest to chest connection and I can start putting these baby punches into his ribs. To make this round extra fun for him, I decide I'm going to switch it up a bit. I keep the punches going to his ribs and I'm going to put my hand over his mouth. Nobody likes to be smothered. It's embarrassing, it's caught on camera in 4K, and if you tap to it, you have to be demoted. But my plan worked because I was able to get my opponent moving. I wanted him to have a little bit of defense here so I have something to show for the video. He shoves me towards open guard, which is good for him so he can stretch me out, make the punches harder to reach him, but he allowed me to kill his base. Look at his hips, they're stuck on the mat and I have my chest on top of him. Greasy combatives would definitely not want to have you in this position where you're on bottom, getting punched, or potentially something worse. Once I make some space, I decide I'm no longer going to sit in this black belt's half guard. I bring in my second foot to start peeling and pushing against him so I can knee slide all the way through while also trying to throw punches at the same time. Then I pass my knee over the belly because when you're punching somebody, side control really isn't that great of a spot unless you can get to the crucifix. I'm being gentle with the punches so I don't completely concuss my partner, but I'm keeping it flowy, moving around, trapping things, and looking for new angles. It's tough to see because of where the camera's at, but I have his arm trapped and he has an underhook, giving me free shots to the head as long as he decides to keep this underhook. Then I start working with my knee over the belly once again. I gotta say, for being another black belt, I don't feel too threatened in this role at all. He's doing a good job on bottom, constantly trying to defend himself and getting to better positions, but I have no threat of him trying to stand up and put me in a bad spot. Instead, he allowed me to shuffle right into three-quarter mount, and it doesn't get any better from here. I'm punching with the same power that would still leave a baby safe, but can you imagine how bad it would look if you go to somebody else's gym and you're just slamming fists during regular training? Nobody wants that. And watching this back, I say that, but then look in the background. She's going ham with that dude back there. So I guess you could say I have worse punching power than a blue belt female. 
But focusing back on us, I'm giving him the wet blanket treatment. I'm trying to be that nightmare fuel so when he goes to sleep, he still sees that ugly redhead on top of him. For the rest of the round, I just kept floating through positions, being nice to him, but I think I got through the black belt test just fine. So instead, let's see how I did with this much bigger guy, and I don't know his belt rank because he took it off, but he started throwing punches immediately. And until, of course, he gave me too much space, I stood up, and we had to reset. From bottom, the first thing I have to do, open my guard. I hate using a closed guard. Once he brings his leg up, I start scooping underneath it and I go towards K-Guard. K-Guard's gonna be an excellent entry so I can start working in on his feet if I want to go for the submission, but then I have to remember this guy is huge and it's easy for him to put his weight down. So I let go of the leg and just turn out towards bottom turtle. From here I can easily switch onto his legs, and instead of trying to work for the double leg, I just stand up and win the round again. Now he's starting to put a little bit more effort into the punches. I can't let this little scrappy dude who just walked in that gym escape too many times. I put my foot against his hip so I can create some space and I start holding his left wrist. You do this because obviously, I don't want to get punched in the face. Then once I can push against his leg while sweeping his foot out, I come out, get on top, and score again. I'd love to show off more of my jiu-jitsu, but Hiran was extremely strict about just get up and use self-defense. He didn't want to see too much pretty jiu-jitsu, he just wanted to see escapes. I'm going in towards the leg, potentially thinking about an ankle lock or a heel hook, until he makes it easier for me. He puts his knee over me and tries to punch behind him, which has no power, but it gives me an easy opportunity to come out, hit him with a double, and I guess I got the attention of the other coach. It's tough to hear what he's saying, but he's asking for my name and basically asking how I got such big quads because of how much power I have in my legs. Now when it was my turn to be on top, it was harder to do because of his long shins. He was just a much longer body compared to the other black belt, and I was content just to use control until Hiran gave me some other advice. Stand up and punch him in the rib, break away, punch him in the face. I took Hiran up on his advice and just kept punching him in the ribs for a while until he decided to move. I was in a pretty strong spot just keeping his shin in front of me and there's no way he's going to stand up from that position. He has a good moment here where he goes towards a tripod sweep, especially powerful with those long legs, but he can't come on top of me so I easily keep him down and I continue using some light pressure until the round ends. Now unfortunately, that's all the rolling there was, one and a half rounds. As we bowed out, I realized this gym isn't like other jiu jitsu gyms. Everyone has their own reasons as to why they train, but he done had this message for me as to why students go to him. People want, they want to learn to defend themselves, but they don't want to be fighting every day. They don't want to come to class and be getting punched and, you know, framed in their neck and cauliflower ear. They want to learn how to fight at a safe intensity. So that's the self-defense. And they want to talk about self-defense. They want to know, like, okay, from here, someone can punch you. They can headlock you. They might go for your eyes. So, but at the same time, they also want to grapple amongst two friends sure. and not be stressed out about getting punched. Mm -hmm. So we have to also kind of bring that in. The question is, when you do grapple where there's no striking consideration, are you still working on your self-defense? So is Gracie Jiu-Jitsu still legit, or is it just different? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Henner and Hiran for having me at your gym. And if you want to get some great looking gear, make sure to go to xmarshall.com. Xmarshall loves to give back to the community, such as giving my viewers free rash guards, and I really support this company. Use promo code TYLER10, you can save yourself some money while also getting some of the best gear.